Molasses may just be the miracle cure for pests on plants, disease on plants, and more biologically active soil, or so the internet says. So today's video, we are going to look at the science as to whether or not it's beneficial to your garden and when it can actually fall incredibly short and be harmful to the garden. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, who's this chicky poo to tell me anything about soil or plant health? Well, my name's Ashley. Hi, hello. And I have a bachelor's of science in soil science. I've been working in the agriculture industry for around 15 years and I take all of this and apply it to my garden. Now, I'm not dogmatic about it. I don't care how you garden. I'm just here to give you the facts or at least what a meta-analysis says is the truth at the given point in time. Unbiased, of course, I'm gonna give you both the benefits and the negatives as I do with any video. Now, here's a story from a Geek Crew member. Jen was someone who had aphids on her tomatoes and she chose to put some molasses into a format that can be sprayed onto the plants. And she said within 24 hours, all of her aphids had disappeared and she chalks it up entirely to the molasses spray that she made. And I have to laugh a little bit, Jen, because she was convinced that she was not a part of the geek crew. And to be a part of the geek crew, all you have to do is be semi-geeky when it comes to gardening. So hit the subscribe button if you want to join my awkward group of 137,000 people. We will adopt you lovingly. So with that being said, Jen is the inspo behind this entire video. So Jen, Congratulations, this video is for you and for everybody else because I think they're gonna enjoy it quite a bit. Now, method to madness number one is actually adding it to your soil. And the reason for this is because molasses actually increase the microbial activity. Very specifically, it increases the microbial biomass carbon within your soil. And essentially that's a fancy word for saying buffet for microbes. Now, while this is a temporary increase, it's an increase that could technically, hypothetically result in more nutrient cycling. This means more bioavailable forms of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, you name it. The recipe for this is literally one teaspoon per gallon of water. That is it. That is all applied once weekly. The downfall of this is if it is applied excessively, it can technically tie up some nitrogen. So that is something you want to watch out for, but it's absolutely something that can be used in all soil types, soilless mediums, AKA potting soils, and then obviously your mineral soil, your abiotic soil, if you will. Can't see terms, it makes me sound smarter. Number two truth about molasses is right here. And that is the compost. Yes, it does actually increase the microbial activity within your compost. And this of course is a good thing. The faster we get compost, the better. Particularly if you're in a cold climate, such as Canada or Northern ports of America or Europe because there's a lot of Europeans on this channel as well. Basically, if you have a winter, molasses in your compost make a difference. It actually increases mesophilic bacterial succession within your compost and this is again very similar to the rules that apply when it comes to adding it to the soil. And essentially, all you want to do is add exactly one gallon of water with a teaspoon of molasses in it for every cubic foot of compost you have. Actually, incredibly fun fact about molasses, you may be wondering, Ashley, why do you not have molasses at home? Why are you not using molasses in the garden if it's so valuable? The answer to that geek crew is because when I was a little girl, I ate molasses cookies and I ate too many and then I vomited everywhere. And similar to my experience when I was older with Jack Daniels, I will not touch a molasses anything since that day. Hence, no molasses will ever be used in my garden, despite whatever science says is good for me. Next up, we have molasses being used as an insecticide, what Jen used, for example. And it's foliar applied as you would any sort of insecticide. And the truth to this is that there may be some anecdotal evidence in cases such as what Jen had that show the application of a molasses foliar applied can kill or help us manage soft bodied pests such as aphids and white flies, for example. It's not gonna take care of any sort of beetle or anything with an exoskeleton, but soft body insects, yes, it can make a difference. Anecdotally, of course, which is a very fancy way of saying people have tried it and then reported value to it, but no university or smart person has actually applied it and used it to see if it works. And you know what that means? You should do it as a gardener because 
why not? You are not a university. You're not gonna lose credibility if you choose to. The people on the internet, however, may fight me on that and say it will lose me credibility because they just don't like me to begin with. You guys just slid down there for a second. Checking me out. I understand it. I check myself out too sometimes. The next used for molasses is actually for disease suppression microbes. And the idea is that we are going to increase the balance of positive microbes that are actually sold as biocontrols on an agricultural scale. So for example, different forms of bacillus or trichoderma that are used to control various different types of diseases can be increased when the molasses is fully replied or actually used in a compost tea as well, I read, is another way to help this increase, or worm castings, oddly enough. I don't, that was like one study though, one. Not a meta-analysis by any stretch of the imagination. Now these microbes are considered antagonistic, and antagonistic simply means that they butt head to head with more harmful forms of microbes, such as Fusarium wilt, wilt or rhizobacteria. Rhizo, rhizotinia, oh my good lord. Now of course, this is again anecdotal, there's no molasses company out there pushing for studies to show that it works great in the garden by any stretch of the imagination. So a lot of the benefits, for example, when it comes to powdery mildew or to leaf spot, is kind of the two main ones that gardeners claim it takes care of, is again, anecdotal home trials, nothing large scale, nothing replicated over multiple years, but just be your own garden scientist, just go do it. See what happens. You may be surprised. You don't have to listen to people with fancy pieces of paper. You can do whatever you want. It's called free will. Free will, folks. And if your free will involves spraying your garden down with something that made me vomit as a child, then give her shit as long as it's not Jack Daniels. You're good. Now with any sort of anything, there's always going to be a negative or a side effect to it. So here is your warning label if you decide to prescribe your plants with molasses. Well, number one is that it immobilizes nitrogen potentially. It feeds microbes and with any organic anything, it's not selective, it's not designed that way. It feeds everything, that includes the harmful ones. So it's going to potentially feed the harmful ones in your soil, the ones on your plants, and the ones in your compost in particular can be bad because that can include things like E. and salmonella. So just keep that in mind. The next reason why you may choose not to use molasses is because it can and will attract things like ants, wasps, and rodents because it is sugar. It is literal sugar. So that is happy fuel for all three of those horrific beings on earth. And when it comes to the soil and it actually increases the microbial activity in the soil, this can be contested and has been contested, particularly if we're talking a soil that is already very rich in carbon and very rich in microbe activity. So sandy soils, for example, would benefit, but clay soils, high in organic material, possibly won't. And so while applying it isn't going to harm anything, it also isn't going to benefit you in any way. But molasses are cheap like borscht, so. Actually, I wouldn't know. I don't buy molasses because it, again, it makes me vomit. So moral of the story, when it comes to adding molasses to your garden, the general consensus is one teaspoon per gallon of water, regardless of where you're applying it or why you're using it. I think there is absolutely no harm in trying it out. I would always let you know if I think that it's detrimental to your garden. This is not in any way. If you see anecdotal evidence that shows it works for your garden, continue using it. Free will. Remember folks, if you're convinced it's a waste of molasses, which can you waste molasses if it's not going in your mouth? I don't know. To me, no you can't then don't do it. Deep crew, let me know in the comments down below if you are one to actually use molasses in the garden or not. Also, let me know if you've vomited from molasses before. I'd just be interested to know how many of you are my spirit animals. And I will talk to you guys next time. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because 60 some percent of you are not subscribed, which is wild.